The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing us under of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Before you begin your Bible study, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, be sure you have named your, your sins privately to God the Father. If we confess our known sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our known sins and to cleanse us from all unknown or forgotten sins and righteousness. So you will then be in fellowship with God after you do that. You are filled with the Holy Spirit and ready to learn Bible doctrine from the Word of God. But if you have never personally believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the issue is not naming your sins. The issue is faith alone in Christ alone. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the command to believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, because we belong to Thee, we have the right and the privilege of fulfilling the function of our priesthood by listening to the teaching of Your Word. We recognize that our growth, our orientation to life, our understanding of Your plan, Your purpose, Your design for each one of us is based upon the constant, daily, consistent assimilation of your word. May God, the Holy Spirit, now sanctify us to the nourishment of our soul. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube. And uh, where we stopped yesterday... This is where we are going to continue to take up. And we are still on the the topic, basic biblical doctrines. Now, we have said yesterday that man desperately needs God. God does not need man. Now, may I ask you, how did the Old Testament people get saved? The answer is by looking forward to the cross by faith. And how do we New Testament people get saved? The answer, by looking backward to the cross by faith. Every believer today is the church, ecclesia. And how does one enter the church? The answer, by means of spirit baptism, Acts 1.5. The mechanism, faith alone in Christ alone, Acts 16.31. Faith on the right object. The right object is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior and Lord. The Christ in the Bible is the only Savior, not the Christ in religion. You see, the Christ in religion does not save anyone because religion considers their Christ to be lower than Mary. They say ad yesum per Mariam to Jesus through Mary. Religion, particularly the Roman Catholic Church, says you cannot come to Jesus without passing through Mary. You have got to be approved by Mary first before going to Jesus. That is false doctrine. And it was Satan, the father and founder of religion, who made it up. The Bible does not say so. That's the reason why the worst thing that could happen to any member of the human race is to believe what religion teaches. 
You see, religion is Satan's own making of a pseudo Christianity. Christianity is a relationship with God through faith in Christ, the Christ in the Bible. There is no other mediator between God and man, only the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, 1 Timothy 2.5 Actually, one cannot believe something he does not know, right? People who are negative to learning the truth in the Word of God cannot believe and apply any biblical doctrine they do not know. Therefore, he has got to hear the gospel first through an evangelist or minister before believing it. God's word says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. You see, salvation is part of the plan of God. The plan of God does not fail. It works perfectly well in every member of the human race. In fact, the plan of God runs every individual person's life. No one can escape from it, whether we like it or not. You see, there are three major kinds or groups of people in this world, namely, the natural, who are the unbelievers, the spiritual, believers who are mature spiritually, and carnal, believers who are not growing spiritually. Look at yourself and find out where you belong in the three groups listed. However, at this point, let us take up five points on the doctrine of heathenism. Number one, God is righteous, plus R and just, perfect justice. Therefore, God can never be unfair to any member of the human race. Number two, the ultimate redemptive work of Christ provided salvation to the entire human race. 2 Corinthians 5.14 Number three, the declared will of God says that all be saved. Now, you remember the seven declared wills of God? Every member of the human race be born again. Every born again must be sanctified. Every believer must be controlled by God, the Holy Spirit. Every believer must give thanks in everything. Believers should trust in the Lord. Believers will suffer. And then believers will be productive. That is found in 1 Timothy 2.4 and 2 Peter 3.9. Number four, whenever a member of the human race has a desire to know who and what God is, meaning positive volition toward God consciousness, God is going to send gospel message to that positive individual. John 7:17 7, and Jeremiah 29:13. Number five, when an unbeliever has a negative volition towards God consciousness, God is under no obligation to send gospel information to that negative individual. Results? Self-induced misery and divinely imputed misery. You see, there are two ways to enter heaven. Listen very carefully. Number one, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. That's one way, to be able to enter heaven. And number two, to die prior to reaching God consciousness. A person who believes in Christ has the right to become a child of God, John 1.12. Believers are sons of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians 3.26. Now, how much faith is needed to believe in Christ, you might ask. The answer is just as small as a mustard seed. 
that kind of faith that is non-meritorious, a childlike faith, the third kind of human perception. Again, what are the two worst ways to die? The answer, number one, to die as an unbeliever. Luke 16.23 And number two, to die the sin unto death as a believer. Now get this point of doctrine. A person who receives a gift but throws that same gift right towards the giver's face, meaning to reject it, is like insulting God's gift, resisting God's gift of salvation, or rejecting God's gift of salvation. God says in His Word, that we can know beyond any doubt that we are on our way to heaven. 1 John 5.13 And he has told us why. Number one, the requirements for heaven have been met for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, the way to heaven is not by works, but by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. John 6, 47, I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. John 3, 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3.36 He who believes in the Son has life, and he who rejects the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Tomorrow we are going to take up how do you know for sure you have indeed become a child of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of examining these things together, which are so important, the mechanics of which do really help us understand grace. May God, the Holy Spirit, then challenge us to persist in our study. We thank you for this Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen.